just talking about this. We have this sealed Wii remote. Which is rare to see. It's rare to see sealed anymore at this point. So it's super uncommon. We're talking about price and price charting. Yeah. I think this thing is worth way more than price charting says it's worth. Yeah. Um, sealed brand new. I think this is probably really uncommon to see a brand new Wii remote still in its packaging. I honestly can't remember if this is the packaging it looked like back in the day. I can't remember. I don't even remember if we bought them like this. I felt like we just bought them as a box or something crazy. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Back in the Wii era, you couldn't even get one of these. Yeah. Like, the, the systems themselves remember, were super uncommon. I remember messing up mine and going to the store and trying to find them, and they were always sold out because people yeah. just always freaking threw them to the walls. <laughs> so they were breaking all There's the time. plenty of them, but sealed still, I think this is worth a lot of more money than it says on price charting. How much do we sell it for and how much someone, I think this is definitely a collection piece for sure, but I don't know how much we should sell it for. And Mel said something interesting. She said, well, we could sell it as a Wiimote and sell it to sell, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting here like, this is a collection piece. I don't people, know. Like, there's some people who are like don't think like that. They they just see that and they're like, oh, brand new, and then they open it because they don't see it as a collection piece. They see it as a, a just another Wii remote. See, I see this as a rarity, and I'm like, this is cool. How much do we sell it for? <laughs> Realistically, I have no clue. We should leave it to the folks to decide. On the <laughs> it's a price question mark question. Is it YouTube's gonna you don't make YouTube? They're gonna say a dollar. They say free. <laughs> Watch, you're, we're gonna do it. All right, you got. Here we go. All right, you, my ex peers, how much would you sell this for? Oh, I I already know what you're gonna say. I've done this before. You guys suck at this. Five ninety nine, three ninety nine, two dollars free. I don't know. How much, how much would you buy this for? I think this thing is priceless. This thing is definitely, definitely more uncommon than that Nintendo NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, Turtles in Time, Turtles, whatever. I mean, we sold it, but. If someone told me this was 50 bucks, I wouldn't blink an eye. I wouldn't. I mean, honestly, I would say if someone told me this was worth 50 bucks, I'd be like, yeah, okay. But again, that is the lovely thing about owning your own retro video game store and the way we do business. You're damn surprised at prices. eBay. So I realistically, here's here's one for 60 plus shipping, but it comes with a nunchuck. Here's one for 37 plus shipping. So 49, 50. It's funny, I said 50, and we're hitting these prices around 40 to 50, right? I I honestly think 50 bucks for this thing is a good price. 40 to 50. We'll do 40, 45. But then we have to wait for YouTube land now. Because you decided to let them decide. And they're going to say free 99. They're going to say free 99. That's not a valid answer, guys. Free 99 isn't valid. It's now we have to wait. Whenever I finish editing this video. <laughs> which I can't even finish editing one video. I just realized I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that 40 to $45 was those how much those originally sold. Yeah, it was like 35 40 bucks in the store. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's just a collection piece. You could just buy one over here. They're cheap. Right, Mel? What's our price on them? We sold the standard Wiimotes for $24.99. Wii Motion Pluses are $34.99. We do have a couple of the Wii Motion Plus adapters for $9.99. Those are, those are mostly what we sell, but this one is more uncommon. One thing that I've dealt with a lot, which is Switch and Switch Lite charge ports. So me and the kids, I think I've replaced every single one of their Switch charge ports at this point, like once or twice on some of the kids. So I was like, you know what? I'm done with it. There has to be a better option. So I was like, okay, how can we do this? Well, this is what I ended up doing. One of these is connected to our USB hub, but these are removable, rechargeable ports. So for their Switch lights, we put all the USB type C's on each of the Switch, and now the kids can't pull out the Switch port, they can't break it. So hopefully that helps that relieve that whole entire problem. I bought like a whole packet full of them. 
um, for pretty cheap on Amazon. So now, if the kids want to charge them, all they have to do is grab the cable and go boop. And this might be able to do some other stuff with it if I can figure out how this works and how the cable works magnetically, we can maybe do like a charging station. As long as the ports have the magnetic ports, they can put them in their own slots. But for right now, this will work perfectly fine. And they're interchangeable. So, you know, if we want to charge on that one, it works. This one charges on here. So now the kids don't have to yell at me when they don't have a charger. So now everyone has a charger and they're charging and they won't break. It's now, it's not a problem. It's Plug and go. Probably best for the switch lights. The dockable switches, most people just leave them in the docks. Still take out the magnetic thing if you wanna charge it, let's say, with the actual charger. For instance, you take one of these things called children and you say, hey, I want you to unplug and plug and charge your switch. So you just took a charger from someone else. So we can take that off the charger. Boom, off, on. Let's grab your switch. Charge it. Boom, there it goes. Start charging. Was that easy? Was that better than before? Yeah. Now you don't have to worry about, and look, you just threw it up there. The cool thing about these is they have like, they just move left and right. 45, you can't really break them. So we'll see how long they last, who knows. But for right now, that's a cool... Yep, that's working. And now you won't break my charge ports and I don't care. No. Now you guys can unplug and plug your chargers and your switches as needed. Mm -hmm. Cool, huh? Yeah. High five. And you guys all alone in the shop and it's another rainy day. Socks. Here for rainy days doesn't mean good. It's usually slow. So it means we got a lot of stuff to catch up on. Our top shelf systems is looking pretty good and one of the newest ones we just put out um it's already gone to have that for at least a couple days maybe a week nope so makes me feel like we need to get some more ps5s in the shop so most likely in the beginning of the year we're gonna start repairing them and we may be hunting spending a little money trying to get some cheap ones so we don't have to sell them for ridiculous amounts of money here Finishing some edit for you guys. How far we've come in a year. It's amazing the fact that we've, it's only two years. It's really been only two years. And we've, we've, we've done really well. More to go, man. I'm just, I'm, I, I can feel it. I can feel it. It's another adventure. And that's the great thing about this is perspective wise, putting yourself in this position gives you a really good perspective on life and focus and it, it's fun it's fun when you're having fun and making money at the same time there are some aspects to this job that uh you know we, we got to change you got to make business decisions and the next following year we said we we're going to go hard but we're actually cutting hours uh we were opening from like 9 a.m to 6 p.m between 9 and like 11 30 12 o'clock not a lot of people came through so we're not opening we're opening at 12 o'clock to 6, so 12 to 6 p.m. Because analytics-wise, we just weren't making a lot of money between the beginning, and I was here by myself anyways, so we're kind of not doing much when it comes to actual revenue. But in general, we weren't making a lot of money. We're not. So we're switching our hours. The advantage of being your own owner is um, when the kids are on holidays. They had to come in here, play video games, scream. You were back here just doing nothing. I'm going to make a watch The Last of Us. You want to play a GameCube game? I don't know what that is. Oh, Daddy. Me and I'll show you. Come here. Come, come on. Come on, young one. Our GameCubes. And that is our GameCube right now that's plugged in. Do you want to play a GameCube game? Do you want to play a GameCube game? Uh, sure. What game? Uh, One's down here. 
We have these ones over here. I collect GameCube games. We have a whole bunch in the back. Because I'm collecting for the GameCube, we can pick through all these. Pick. I pick Shrek Super Party. Oh yeah? All right, let's go plug it in. You guys are gonna play Shrek Super Party. You excited? Yeah. Yeah, well, have fun. Hopefully keep them busy, detracted, so I can actually maybe get some work done. Mario Party, but you don't even know. Y'all, okay. Anybody out there who played Fusion Frenzy knows what I'm talking about. This game's fire. <sighs> Underrated. You said, see, look at the, the set says nonstop party game action. Yeah. That tells you that this game is nonstop party game. Yeah, it's nonstop party game. And for, and for the adults out there, it's a great drinking game. Um, but because it's nonstop. But if you, if you're sick of Mario Party and all of your friendships ending, like dramatically, then play this game, and uh, you guys will just like punch each other out. And, uh, How is that better than Mario Party? It's action packed, bro. Like, <laughs> it's action packed party time game. I don't know. I have, dude. I have a love hate relationship with this game, and uh, it's just. Well, it's now fun. you can love hate it again. It's hours of like fun and trauma packed into one <laughs> sitting. Thank you for watching. Until next time, don't forget to level, level up. up. Yeah. yeah.